Hey, bud. So we got the graveyard shift again, huh? Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> you want a donut? What, wreck your sexy butt? No, thanks. I'll see you later. Stay loose. So you got kids to do Christmas for, Jeremy? Not yet. We're waiting for the phone to 11 at 14104 Polk Street, San Fernando. It's an armed robbery. Keep my coffee hot, Judy. Roger, unit six. Proceed to Laurel and Robinson. Suspect description on that 211. White, light brown hair, approximately 5'11, weight 150 to 170, wearing blue denim jacket, early to mid 20s, armed with automatic. This is Unit 21. I am at Workman and Woodruff. I'm going to go code 6 to question suspect on the 211. Acknowledge 21. Unit 28, go to Workman and Woodruff to back up Unit 21. He is code 6. Yeah, I heard him. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? Any sign of unit 21. You want to confirm the location? Workman and Woodruff confirm. Officer down at Workman and Woodruff. Repeat. Officer down at Workman and Woodruff. All units vicinity of Workman and Woodruff. We have an officer down. Hey! Officer needs assistance. Workman and Woodruff. All units. Request permission to take Webb to the hospital. He can't wait for an ambulance. Permission granted. The watch commander is on his way to the town. Stay with me, buddy. Stay with me, now. What? Come on. His cruiser was gone when I got here. Get him to Holy Cross. Look. Stay in there, buddy. I got you. I got you. Go. All units. San Fernando police officer shot. Suspect took black and white Dodge Diplomat cruiser. Time to draw his gun. You Harvey? I'm Detective Sergeant Gleason. This is Detective Wilson. How's Officer Webb? Dead. Six shots up close. Damn it. Sorry. We recovered these six shell casings. Looks like nine millimeter. And over here, where he fell, 
Three slugs went all the way through him and gouged out holes in the cement. That means he was shot at least three times after he went down. We'll get him. Settle down, guys. All right. Captain asked me to update you on the Webb homicide, but first I would like to introduce Miss Tanya Blackman. She's with the district attorney's office. She's new with the DA, and she has been assigned as liaison on the Office of Webb case. Now, Sergeant Rivetti and the San Fernando police have done everything they can do on their end, so now it's up to us. So, who's first? Wilson. Well, there's not much. First, the police cruiser was abandoned in Sepulveda Dam, no witnesses. Second, the store clerk is from India, and apparently you all look the same to him. He's pretty confused. This bulletin with artist composite went out to all 50 states without a suspect's description. I think Sergeant Christensen has some more in ballistics. Charlie? As you know, we recovered six 9mm shell casings. They were of three different makes. All were reloads, some hot-loaded, to penetrate a bulletproof vest. Now, this particular piece leaves a distinctive breech marking on every single shell it fires. Find that gun, and we've got a match. The six shell casings, that's all they've got? No witnesses? It was the middle of the night on Christmas Eve. Cop killing on Christmas Eve. Everybody's watching to see if the police try to hang this on someone just to relieve the pressure. Well, pass the word to those deputies. We're going to be very hard to please on this one. Detective Division, Wilson. Uh, yeah, this is Lieutenant Siler calling from uh, Clinton, Oklahoma. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Well, sir, it's about your flyer here on that uh, police homicide. Officer Webb? Uh, yes, sir. We picked up a vagrant here a couple of days ago that does fit the description, and uh, during the search, we found a letter that he had written but didn't mail. Well, at the bottom of that letter, he wrote, P.S., I killed Officer Webb in San Fernando. That is Robert Paul Burnt, age 24. Prior convictions for auto theft, assault, and armed robbery. And boy, he's got a bunch of aliases, too, among them John Dillinger. Apparently, the boy does know his guns, though. He carries a 357 Magnum. He's got a history of substance abuse, and he's done hard time in Texas. What about this letter where he said he killed Webb? Well, it was dated two weeks ago, kind of a confession in which he also claims the Mafia is after him for a hit that he didn't do. But it turns out he knew a lot of details about the Webb homicide, and he was in San Fernando during Christmas. I can remain silent. I have the right to an attorney. If I say anything, rada da da, rada da da. I know the Miranda drill, man. You want to talk about the Webb killing? Might as well, but you got to understand, I respect the police. My daddy was a cop. That right. Yeah, that's right. MP, U.S. Army. OK, Robert, let's start from the beginning. <clears throat> when did it happen? Around the night of the day before Christmas. The night of the day before Christmas? Mm-hmm. You got to understand, I was really ripped. I was at this uh, party at the Vine Grove Apartments, and uh, my memory's a little, you know. What were you on? Speed, coke, pot, booze. I was lit up like a tree. <clears throat> anyway, at this party. I remember I was really mad. Friends were ragging me about some old girlfriend. So as I went to the bathroom, I looked on the bedroom dresser, and there was this uh, automatic just sitting there. What type? Nine millimeter, I think. So I stuck it in my pants, and uh, I drove to the valley somewhere near San Fernando. I needed cigarettes, so I stopped at this convenience store, and there was maybe hmm, one, two customers. So what the hell? <laughs> I robbed it, OK? Then what? I come out, and uh, my car is gone. Must have left the keys. And uh, I start walking along in this uh, black and white. Pulled over, and officer, he got out. I think he uh, 
asked me something. And I was really paranoid because of the drugs. And I pulled the gun and I started shooting. I mean, I didn't want to kill him. I just panicked. How many times did you fire, Robert? So at least three before he went down. And then I, I just kept shooting until the gun was empty. Looks familiar yet? Yeah, yeah. Around the corner, there's a garage, right? Right. Right. And there's an empty one-level office building right across the street. Sure, he was ripped on drugs. Hang on. What are we playing, hot and cold here? Fell right there, and then three shots was my last bullet holes. I'm looking for a place to dump it. This looked as good as any, so I just kind of launched it down in here. The door got hung up on the edge of this culvert. I just left it. You knew the abandoned cruiser location pretty well, John. And he described the homicide location before we got there. The garage next door, an empty office building across the street. Yeah, but why the discrepancies? He knows things he shouldn't know, and he's hazy on things he should. Hey, look, this is a wacko who was high on speed, coke, pot, and booze. Did you see this medical history? Diagnosis, suicidal, schizophrenia, psychopathic psychosis with brain trauma. Keep digging. You're being too cautious, John. Come on. If this was any case other than a cop killing, we'd have an indictment. I am preparing an indictment, but I want to get those holes filled. What's next? Bert agreed to a polygraph. She's taking it right now. Were you in San Fernando over Christmas? Yes. Last Christmas, did you fire the shots that killed Officer Webb? No. Did you fire the shots that killed Officer Webb in San Fernando? No. Did you shoot Officer Webb? No. Sure, there are holes. You ever work a homicide without loose ends? Would help if Bert weren't so whacked, you know? Bert knew the exact amount taken in the robbery, $28. The store clerk didn't even know that. He thought it was $250 was taken. Hey, he was wrong. Bert was right. <sighs> I'm on duty. Bert's polygraph report just came in. <clears throat> Get this. During the test, Bert denied killing Officer Webb. Can't believe it. The examiner concluded. Bert's response was strong, consistent, and in such a pattern that he had not answered truthfully. It is therefore the opinion of this examiner that Bert was involved in the shooting of Officer Webb. Now! The prosecutor, uh, John Watson, is railroading Robert Bert, playing political football, responding to public pressure of a cop killer. Well, Bert is a human being, not a football, and he did not kill Officer Webb. Father Dominic, how do you know Bert didn't kill Officer Webb? I know Bobby Burnt. He fantasizes a lot, uh, he's wacky, but not to the extent of killing someone. That's Father John Dominic. Watson, he's helped Burnt in the man. past, gave him work making deliveries for the church. Mr. Watson! Mr. Watson, come in! Mr. Watson, evidence to indict Robert Burnt. Fantasies are no defense for the murder of a police officer. Excuse me. 
But Father Dominic again responded with a different view. John Watson is sending an innocent man to the gas chamber. And this is a political decision. It's not a legal decision, not a law enforcement Hello. decision. And it's based upon oh, media hi, Mom. and public pressure because of this tragic murder of Just a police a officer. But Bobby Byrne. Your mother. Hello, Mom. Yeah, I'm watching it. No. No, 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 Mom. I'm not sending an innocent man to the gas chamber. And no, Ma, I, I don't care what the priest said. Ma, huh? I don't care if he's the Pope. Ma, listen, listen, listen. Ma, listen. The guy confessed. Detective said. This is Special Agent Murphy in Hobbs, New Mexico. Are you the detective assigned to the Officer Webb homicide? Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, well, there's a chemistry student at New Mexico Tech named William Mothershed. He's been bragging to his girlfriend that he killed a cop. And we have information that the gun used in the web slaying may have been bought by him. You got class again. Yeah. What were you doing? I was, uh, I was in the transitional state between dreaming and scheming. <laughs> oh, what about? Well, like kidnap an oil sheik and use the ransom money to travel? Huh? Or computer rape, the World Bank. That's possible, you know. <laughs> right. It is. <laughs> what are you going to do if, God forbid, you ever grow up? Oh, it doesn't matter, Lisa. I mean, as long as I don't drudge through each day. You know, my parents do that. Hey, what do you really want, most of all? To impress you. <laughs> Wanna see me, Chief? Yeah, Johnny, come in. This is a request from Los Angeles County Sheriff's. I got an FBI lead that a student named Wayne Farrell sold a gun that may be the murder weapon in this cop killing. Who did he sell the gun to? A student named William Mothershed. First, go talk to this Wayne Farrell. Then, this is a different case. You remember that robbery at the University Museum last November? Yeah. Well, we got a tip that another student named Lisa Darby has some information on it. Okay, I'm gone. Nice pull. You rigged that hair trigger, Wayne? Yeah, I also do my own reloads. Is this like the piece you sold Mothershed? No, that was uh, nine millimeter, Smith and Wesson. What did he want it for? Targets. A lot of guys at school shoot. <laughs> Some girls too. Who even told you that I knew anything about the museum robbery? People talk. Somebody overheard you, Lisa. <laughs> I only know what I was told. So? Tell me. Lisa, withholding information about a crime is not good. Look, I don't know for certain, but... Steve Nolan. I used to go out with him. He said that he was in it. Steve Nolan. Give me a break, Trujillo. This is just another one of your hassles. The Mineral Museum was robbed in November. Bulk silver was stolen, and you were overheard talking about it. To who? Does it matter, Stevie? Look, you're already on probation in Chicago, so you talk to me or I talk to the probation officer. And don't waste my time, huh? Got a plane to meet. There was another guy, right? He had just bought some lockpicking tools, so we did it like on a like on a dare, playing games, you know? Who was the other guy? Bill Mothershed. Mothershed? Well, you know him? Go on. Well, it was Bill's idea to rob the museum. Like, it was just a thing to do, okay? It was felony burglary, okay? Okay, guys, just one final question. I thought you already made an arrest in the web killing. We have. So, what brings you to God's country? 
a very picky prosecutor who wants all the holes plugged. Huh. Out of the blue, we get this FBI lead on the gun from here. What kind of gun? It's nine millimeter, semi-automatic. Hey, uh, did you talk to Wayne Farrell? Yeah, and he says he sold a nine millimeter to a Bill Mothershed. Where can we find Mothershed? In jail. You got him in jail? He will be. I'm bringing him in for questioning on a different rap, burglary. Huh. Gents, look, Mikasa Sukasa, I'll be back in a few, huh? Thanks. Appreciate it. Burglary? Hmm. William Mothershed? Yes. Sergeant Trujillo, Socorro Police Department. I'd like you to come down to the station for some questioning. What about? Mineral Museum burglary. I've already talked to Steve Nolan. Let's go. Hey. You guys make great coffee. Thank you. Did you pick up Mother Shed? <laughs> yep, he's in the lockup. But I got to see the chief before I question him. You guys want to crack at him first? Uh, sure. Absolutely. Second door on the left. All right, appreciate it. Got it. Officer. Oh, now, I want to be sure you understand, Bill, that you have the right to counsel. So, you want an attorney, Bill? Yes. Please. No answer. We only got three attorneys in the whole county who practice criminal law. Can't question Mothership now without one. I'll try Ben Salter. Looks like you boys wasted a trip. And so after you couldn't pick the lock, what did you do? You know, I, I want to, uh, I want to talk to those L.A. detectives. About what? About the cop that I shot. They're finding you an attorney. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want an attorney. I want to talk to them, and I want to talk to, um, Lisa Darby, please. I told her a different story, and I don't want her to hear it from somebody else. OK. I can't understand why nobody's. Wait a minute. Fishing season opens today. Hell, we're never going to find anybody in the office. Chief? Yeah, Johnny. Mothership wants to talk to you guys. No, no lawyer. So this is about some copy shot. You waive right to counsel? That's what he says. Another confession? Wait a minute, Gleason. Somebody else wants to confess to the web killing, and there are no lawyers available. Where on this sweet planet are there no lawyers? I want to go there. All right, where the hell is Socorro? OK, OK, now you listen to me. You turn on that tape recorder, the minute you walk in the door, I want everything. The Miranda, his waiver of his counsel, everything. From the start, before you start. OK, and get back to me. The lawyers have all gone fishing. It's my kind of town. Did you buy the weapon, Bill? Yes. Nine millimeter for uh, uh, $300. What brand was it? I don't know. I don't, I don't know that much about guns. What'd you do with it then? Um, I committed an armed robbery. Can you uh, describe the store clerk? Yes, he was Middle Eastern. I'd uh, been in the store several times uh, as a customer two years ago. My parents live in the neighborhood. So, how much money did you get? In excess of uh, $50. Damn. Damn, cocker. I'm sorry, guys. You see the size of that thing? As you know, cockroaches have developed a unique survival system. And when you kill one, it sends off a, uh, a chemical alarm that alerts the other cockroaches. 
That's so. Can you describe Officer Webb? I'm not very good at, uh, at describing people. Well, did he have a mustache? I'm not uh, certain. Was he wearing an officer's cap? Yes. Yes, I think so. You were on foot? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a car. And uh, I was walking. Yeah. This um, police car uh, drove by and uh, and then came to a stop, and uh, an officer got out, and um, he walked up to me, and I had my weapon in my waistband, and it was around front, and I, and I think he noticed that, and, uh, and then he reached to draw, and he yelled, freeze, and I panicked, and I shot the officer. How many times did you fire, Bill? I have uh, no idea. I didn't, um, you know, I, I, mean, I, I realized what I was doing at this point, you know, so, uh, so I stopped. I'm, I'm sure that he was alive, you know, I had no intentions of murdering that man. Albeit I probably did. He knows an awful lot. Yeah, and misses a lot. We have had a mustache for starters. San Fernando police are not issued officer's caps. You had the gun right. And the money wrong. As you well know, it's $28 and not in excess of 50. And like Byrne, he says he panicked. Hell, I don't know. The kid talks like a computer, like, a, like an educated version of Burnt. <laughs> Damn it, Al. You realize we have the same questions as with Burnt? Bill Mothershed didn't do it. How do you know so much? What's his game? You want me to collect the reward for the museum robbery? Sure. It was your information that led them to me. That's $250. Now, don't worry. I know you didn't do this to get me in trouble, but you might as well let it pay off for you. You know what I mean? I would do anything for you. You know that. Billy, what are we going to do about this mess? They're going to question me. What do I say? You just tell them what I told you. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> well, all you, all you know is what I told you, right? In Chicago? Right. Well, then just tell them that, you see? And then you can collect the big reward. What big reward? Officer Webb. Huh? Big time. $31,000. Hmm? Damn it. Fantasy time again. You're making this up, right? Hmm? I never know when to believe you. This geology lab stuff. Look, if they found a morthrosite on the moon dating 4,400 million years ago, then... Hey, what's wrong? Billy, that's what's wrong. He lies to me, and yet he loves me. Now he worships me. <sighs> he told me he killed somebody. Billy? What, you believe him? I don't know. No. Damn him. What do I do? What do I do? Well, talk to somebody. Uh, you're right. 
But if he's lying, I'll look like a real jerk. Well, what if he isn't? Karen, I'm the only person in the whole world that Billy completely trusts, okay? Besides, if he did kill somebody and I tell, will that bring them back? Oh, come on, Lisa. Like, what about the law? And what about trust? Don't I at least owe him that? Frankly, I don't know what you see in the guy. I mean, yeah, he's cute, but... It's like he's been saving up love his whole life to give to somebody, and that somebody is me. How can I betray him? I can't. I just can't. <laughs> hey, Bert. What? Have you seen the paper? No. Some dude just confessed to your cop killing. <laughs> Our college kid. <laughs> Here, check it out. William Mothershed, a New Mexico tech student, confessed to the shooting of Officer Webb on Christmas Eve. What? What the hell is this punk trying to prove? So, we're flying back in this little plane, and we're bouncing all over the damn sky. So I took a little shot of bourbon. Offered Mother Shed a drink. He looked at me straight faced. He said, Deputy, I can't do that. I'm underage. <laughs> like I want to card the guy or something. I mean, go figure. <laughs> Take her easy. Hello, Mrs. Mothershed? Sir. Yes, this is Detective Set from the Sheriff's Department. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to know if you were aware that we we're holding your son, William. Yes. Yes, Detective Set, we heard, but we're confused uh, as to why our son was brought here for a burglary charge in Segoro. Well, ma'am, I'm afraid the charge is murder. What? Oh, my God. No. All right, yes. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Well? The charge isn't burglary. It's murder. Policeman. This way. You OK? Yes, sir. I mean, do you need anything? No, sir. Tilly. Hello. Hi. We're here for you. Yeah. Last week, I, I meant to call and tell you, I took an exam for the Air Force. The Air Force? Yes, and, and listen, I scored in the top one percentile nationwide, missed only one. Billy, Bill, do you know where you are? Yes. Do you know why you're here? Yes, Mother. Did you do it? Listen. No matter what has happened, we are here for you. We're supporting you. Have you heard from Lisa? Really, I never even met Lisa. Oh, you'd like her. He's in jail for murder, and the, the only thing he says is that he scored high on an Air Force test. I mean, what is he thinking? You asking me? I never understood him. So, what did Bill do with the gun? He says he and some buddies drove to Salt Lake City, dropped the gun parts along the way. Mother shed and burnt. So different, and yet, it's strangely similar. What a paradox. Do they know each other?
Thank you for seeing me. We just want to clear something up. Do you recognize him? Oh, my God. Is that a picture of Officer Webb? Wait, wait a minute, Tanya. Are, are, are you trying to tell me that he's supposed to have killed Webb and he thinks that Burns' picture is Webb? Oh, man. The fence is going to love this. So I came down that road there, and um, I thought that, that this was it here, that it continued through here, but uh, I, got, I got stuck in the ditch, and I left the uh, keys in the car and the door open, and, uh, and um, I, you know, I just... Then what? I took off, and I left the car here. And, um, I just, uh, that, that, that's it, you know, I just, um... Uh, How'd he do at the murder site? And, um, we didn't take him. Uh, he was, uh, yeah. he was too upset to go. Burns' best evidence was a death scene, like those bullet holes in the sidewalk. And his polygraph, and the money. Oh, well, guys, we can't flip a coin. We need some hard evidence. A witness, a gun, something. Bill Mothershed, kill a cop. Right. Look, man, Bill's just a little guy trying to fit in. So he brags. A lot. And he was worried about losing Lisa. I see. OK, look, where do you get brass for your reloads? Pick them up the range, everybody shoots there. Did you happen to have any old shells fired from the piece you sold Mothershed? No. Still might be some at the range from the day he fired that gun, but that was, uh, four or five months ago. Bobby Burt came to us via Traveler's Aid, so we put him up here at the mission. What do you know about him? Robert is a very unusual person. Strange but likable. I got to know him as the result of an unusual request. Well, I'll help if I can, Robert. What is it? Well, I'd like a special mass said for my wife. She died last year. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was in Texas, and uh, I was a rookie Texas Ranger. You were Texas Ranger? Yeah. Well, anyway, she was in a bank, and uh, she was depositing my paycheck. It got held up, and she got killed in the crossfire. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't the police's fault. I mean, she just happened to be there. <sighs> Didn't seem to be no point in going on, you know? So I quit, and my mother, she took my daughter, and, you know, just, just drifted. And, Anyway, here I am. I'd be glad to say a special mass for your wife. When did you see him last? It was about a week after Christmas. He was in army uniform. Oh, Padre, have a look. Bobby. Are you sure this is what you want? I got no choice, Father. I got to get moving on, so I re-upped. Lost a rocker from my old rank. We ship out tomorrow, Germany. Hmm, Bobby, you were just getting such a good start here. You wish me luck? Sure. That was right after Christmas? Mm-hmm. He was arrested in Oklahoma, not Germany. He never had a wife or child. And he never was in the Army. Father, are you familiar with Burnt's mental history? Oh, yes. I don't think Bobby's really able to distinguish fantasy from reality. But he's not dangerous. Bobby's not a murderer. He couldn't kill anyone. Nope, that's 45. Well, how many we got? Fourteen. Nine millimeter. Fired from Bill's gun? Oh, something gotta be. Anyway, 
I'm getting some great brass. I don't understand. Well, maybe it isn't my job to understand. Maybe my job is just to be supportive, huh? I'm so sorry that this is causing you so much pain, Mom. Hey, we're tough Indiana stock, right? So Dad always said. Hmm. I promised myself I wouldn't get into this, but... Is it something I did? Or you didn't do? Because you always stayed so um, closed off with your books and TV. Um, you know, this is so hard to believe. It's just so damn hard. For drive. What the hell is this? A little present flown in from Socorro this morning. You said you could match the shells at Webb's death scene, right? Maybe. Where'd they get them? Been waiting in the sand for five months, so naturally it's a rush. Like today? I give up. Where are we going? The hot box burned. Well, the police work on Mother's shit. I want to know why he confessed to a crime he now says he didn't commit. I want to know today. Go to it, Counselor. Who's chained? Do you think you were joking? Huh? Look, I don't have to tell you. You don't have to take. First, you wrote a letter saying that you did it. Then you tell the Oklahoma police. You didn't do it. Next, you say the Mafia is after you for not doing it. Then you tell us you did it, and then you didn't do it. Look, you can't. You waste everybody's time from Oklahoma to L.A. County. Do you want to waste my time? Huh? I got more important things to do, like my nails. You got no call. I'll tell you what I got. I have got orders from a very angry deputy district attorney to find out why you said you did it if you didn't do it. And if I don't find out now, he's not going to bother you with any more questions. Uh -uh. He's simply going to personally take you down for murder one. Gas chamber. Baby, that good old boy will do it. You follow me, sweet cheeks? Oh, you're one tough mama. This is my sweet side. Now, why did you confess to a crime you say you didn't do? You ever done time in Texas? Burnt says he confessed because Oklahoma was about to extradite him to Texas, where they had him cold on armed robbery. Now, he had done time in Texas. He said he would rather do time in hell. So by confessing to killing Webb, he serves time in California, his prison of choice. I don't buy it. He knows too much about Webb's killing. And that letter he wrote confessing to killing Webb two weeks before he was arrested in Oklahoma. Well, here's a twist you'll love. We traced Burnt's personal gun, 357. It was bought for him by Father Dominic. <laughs> Wait till I tell my mother. Burnt talked the priest into buying it for him so he could get a job as a security guard. <laughs> I love it. What about uh, ballistics? OK. Here's what we got. The shells Trujillo dug up in Socorro and the six shells found at the Webb murder scene were fired from the same gun. Now, John. I know this is going to be a very unpopular choice, but I think the Mothershed kid did it. Unpopular. A college student without even a traffic ticket against a mental case with a long record who I've had in jail for murder for six weeks, no problem. Ballistics don't lie, John. Everything lies in this case. OK. OK. We've drawn up an indictment against Mothershed. The court is appointing him a lawyer. There was another convenience store robbery two nights before the one in Webb's killing, right? 
This is the same area. They could be linked. Two store clerks have only looked at pictures of burnt. Let's put Mother Shed and Burnt together in the same lineup, live and in color, and let them pick one. Face the front, please. Recognize anyone? No. No. Next line up, please. Sorry, I'm late. Unfortunately, you haven't missed a thing. <laughs> Face the front, please. Face the right, please. Now to the left, please. Recognize anyone? No. The man is not there. Strike two. Oh, no. Oh, yes. In the flesh. Sergeant Gleason, how you doing? Charlie, how are you? Miss Tanya Blackman, John Watson's assistant. Bill Mothershed's counsel for the defense. Charles, charming Charlie Lloyd. My pleasure. You been with Watson long? This is my first assignment. Mm -hmm. He's good. You'll learn a lot of law. Would you please inform John Watson that my client, Bill Mothershed, has decided to plead not guilty. So now the DA has two confessions and two retractions. And we got us a real whodunit. Bert, you're off the hook. Charges dropped. Now, wait a minute. Mike. Relax. Uh -uh. Mr. Watson, why don't you let me hang around a while? I could really help you nail mother shit. I mean, hell, you've had me booked here, what, six weeks? <laughs> How's that going to look? I could really be a help. Well, gee, thanks. But we're sending you back where we found you. And from what I understand, they're sending you to Texas. Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Jaffe to see you. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Jay. Good to finally work with you. Who are you kidding? When I saw your name on the co-counsel list, I grabbed you. Thanks. That's it? Yep. DA sent them over. Interviews, lab reports, about 10 confessions, counting all the people the mother shed talked to. A client is 19, looks 14, white bread, scholarship honor student, never been in trouble. What's his story? Pick one. Mother shed is also a liar and a braggart. He lives in this elaborate fantasy world. You mean like burnt? Weird, huh? He's also crazy about a girl. To impress her, he'd swear he shot Lincoln. OK, OK, I didn't ask, but with several confessions, you think maybe he's not guilty? <laughs> you see? Thanks. Jay, he just may be innocent. He lives in fantasy, but for him to actually kill Webb makes no sense. I think to let the wrong man go. I want to call him back as witness for defense. The Saudi defense. Some other dude did it. Band is the other dude. Who already confessed to the crime and was indicted by the same DA who now says Mothershed did it. Nice. <laughs> we got a meeting with his parents tomorrow. They're devastated. I'll be here. I'm on my way to meet Mothershed. Any suggestions? Nope. I didn't get anywhere with him. Maybe you can. Now, first, Bill, we don't know or care to know if you're guilty or innocent. Our job is to make the DA prove his charges, understand? Yes, sir. But I don't want you to lie to me, OK? Affirmative. Thank you, guard. Now, first, we hope to use Byrne as a defense witness. Who is Burnt? You don't know about Byrne? Should I? He confessed to killing Webb weeks ago. He was even indicted. He fit the same description as you. He... You don't know any of this? No.
You mean someone like me has also confessed to killing Officer Webb? The mathematical probability on that has got to be astronomical. And then, and then, he becomes your key witness. Uh, come here. Have a seat. I know all this is a first for you. How are you handling confinement? Uh, I'm adapting. You had any visitors? Like your girlfriend? You mean Lisa? No, but, uh, but, but she wrote me, and, uh, and I'm sure she'll come by. I just don't see why I have to become involved. Because you have been subpoenaed as a witness for the prosecution. You have information relating to a homicide. It's in your interest to cooperate. I don't know anything. I wasn't there. You talked about it with Bill. And you heard your friends talking, right? Yeah. But I mean, there was. We've done our homework, Lisa. Five of you knew Bill said he killed a cop. Five bright, all American college students, and not one of you came forward. Well, nobody knew for sure that he was. What do you think this was? Cheating on a pop quiz? Man was murdered. He had a family. He was a policeman trying to stop some scum who had robbed a store. Officer Jeremy Webb was shot in cold blood when he tried to ask a question. In this office, that is a deeply moral issue. Look, I'm trying to tell you that I don't know anything. Tell me about uh, Bill's family. He never talked about his family. Never. Well, actually, there was this one time. He kind of talked about it. You know, Lisa, I um, I, I don't think that I want to have kids. <laughs> Who offered? <laughs> no, I. <laughs> Okay, why not? Well, well, because then I'd have to be a father, and um, and uh, and the simplest things can cause such problems, even chess. Chess? Yeah. Dumb move. Check me. I was always so afraid of him. I don't, I don't think that I want to be a parent. He'd let a hard time with your dad stop you from having kids. You wouldn't? No. If everybody thought that way, the human race would disappear. No. When I want to have kids, nothing or anybody is going to stop me. God, you're incredible. so much. And Bill looked fine. He says he's eating and sleeping okay. Thank you, Jay. Before we start, I want you to know that we understand how very difficult this is for the parents. Yes, it is. But how very important it is that you stand by your son. Can you tell us about when Bill came home for Christmas. Christmas. Billy had changed. All he could talk about was this girl, Lisa. And, uh, and, and, and we met in, uh, in geology lab. She wants to be a petroleum engineer. She must be very smart, huh? Oh, oh yeah, she's, uh, She's smarter than me, even. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, um... I need to borrow some money. Just enough for a, uh, a second-hand car. Four wheels to get me up to Chicago. 
Chicago. Mm. I, uh, I, I promised Lisa that I would drive up and visit her over Christmas. It's, it's really important to her, you know. Oh, Dale B. Honey, and I'm the only paycheck since Dad got laid off, so the money isn't there. I mean, Christmas is gonna be a strain. It's okay. At least I asked, right? Christmas morning, when I got up, Billy was already packed, and his friend Todd was in the kitchen. Oh, you're up early. Merry Christmas, Todd. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Mothership. We'll be in the car. Okay. Where are you going? Uh, to Chicago. But honey, it's Christmas Day. Yeah, but uh, Todd and Dennis are driving to, uh, to Salt Lake City today. And, uh, and, and I could just take a, a, a bus from there. Billy, to... please don't go. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I've, I've got to see Lisa, you know? Okay. Bye, Mom. Bye. Lisa, what happened with you and Bill in Chicago? Bill had told me he was going to buy a car and drive to Chicago, but... Then he phoned and asked me to meet him at the bus station. Hey, hi. Hello, Lisa. Oh, Billy. Oh, no. Billy. Yes. What happened? I thought you were going to get a car. Yeah, I, well, I didn't get the car because I didn't get the money. Now, I'll keep, now, wait a second. I'll keep this very simple. I used to work at this photo store, right? And I know they're set up, so I tried to burglarize it. I bypassed, I bypassed the burglar alarm, and I got in OK. And then I penetrated the money lockup system with relative ease, and I got six thousand dollars. Well, then why didn't you get a car? Hey, six thousand, huh? I got that out. Anyway, I, I I put it on the counter, and somehow I must have uh, tripped a, uh, a silent alarm or something because before I knew it, this cop is coming, and he he reached for his gun and I reached for mine, and I shot him. You shot a cop? Yeah. Yeah, I had to get out of there. Yeah. And, um, and then I, you know, I figured that he'd probably radioed for backup. So guess what? I, I, I stole his car. And left the $6,000. Hmm? Yes, on the counter. Wait a minute. Can this cop identify you? No, no, no. That won't be a problem. What do you think he meant by that? I don't know. I mean, who would believe that? See, Billy brags a lot, especially to me. He'll say anything, anything to impress me. But when you went back to school, you told somebody. Yeah. I mean, I thought, what if it is true? I had to tell somebody. So I told my best friend. And it would be great if we could all go to L.A. over the spring break. What, there'd be six of us? No, we can't go to L.A. Bill got in trouble there over Christmas. That was L.A.? Mm-hmm. He said the guy was a cop. Karen told her boyfriend, Greg. Greg's mother overheard, and she called the FBI. Turns out the mother's a dispatcher for the Dobbs County Police. The FBI called us, and we flew to Socorro. Imagine. Five kids knew, and nobody talked. Nobody. John? Huh? Over here. What's wrong? Can't sleep. Can't try him in the middle of the night, honey. Court isn't open. I was thinking about Skipper and Becky. What's wrong with Sam? Nothing. Yet. Those college kids on this case, bright, smart, aware, same things we want for Skipper and Becky. The very same things. And not one of them spoke up. Nobody. 
Not even when one, one of them may have killed a cop. Come on, John. You know how it is at that age. Nobody ever wants to tell on their friends. Yeah, but aren't there exceptions? <laughs> like, uh, for murder? I mean... What's gonna happen when Skipper and Becky are out on their own and we're not there for them to talk to? Those kids got every safeguard a parent could build. Till Mother should never even had a, a traffic ticket. How can you know? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we appreciate this. We've been tracking this guy for weeks. Thank you. Jay, I've been calling all over the Oklahoma and Texas prison systems looking for Bernd. Guess what? He's not there. He escaped? No. He's in Arizona, in jail, convicted as accessory to two murders. Perfect. Yeah. And to this, we can now add convicted as accessory to two murders in Arizona. Was that before or after you killed Webb? I didn't kill Webb. You said you did. This Arizona job must have been real quick. We well, see. One of the victims lived to testify. I didn't pull no trigger. Is the other guy used my gun. That's why it's charged. I know the meaning of accessory to a murder. Well, Robert, we've subpoenaed you for the defense. They may not call you for pre-trial, but when we get to the main event... Oh, I'm glad. You're glad? Yeah, because I can finally show the cops what fools I made of them. See ya. I made a fake confession, and I had them chasing their tails so bad that they indicted me. Yeah, that's real clever. Oh, uh, yeah. So, how's putting me on gonna help you? Simple. First you confessed killing Webb, and now you're saying you didn't. I'm gonna prove you're a liar. I'm gonna make fools of them. Because if they let Mother Shed go, they got an unsolved cop kill, and they're gonna try to pin it on me. Oh, well, I'm going to blow your defense to hell and gone. Pre-trial hearing is two days away. Let me explain. There's no jury. Both sides appear before the judge and present their case so certain ground rules can be established for the trial. Uh, for example, is certain evidence admissible? Like your confession. And, and Burns' testimony? Right. So it's sort of a prologue. Uh, and we got a lot going for us. Uh, first of all, you're squeaky clean, no criminal record, you're very young, and you had no real motive to commit robbery or kill a cop. Like, you didn't need the money for drugs. In your confession, you have a history of bragging to impress everybody, especially Lisa. So when this shooting happens in your neighborhood, you take the credit because you are the most confused slice of white bread in San Fernando Valley. I was. And, uh... And when those L.A. detectives showed up, I went for it. I was driven by the situation. Yeah. I can definitely make that clear on the stand. Stand? Uh, you're not going on the stand. Look, son, this is not TV. We don't put a murder defendant on the stand unless there are no options. Well, are most of your defendants of my intelligence? No. Articulate. That's really not the issue. I want to take the stand. Why? Well, it's what I, what I call sort of a, a games theory. There are three criteria, simple but empirical. One, there's no jury, so I can't get hurt. Two, having lived it, I can best articulate it. And three, intelligence is my best weapon, and logic dictates that I use that. Games theory. 
Whatever that is, Watson's gonna eat him a bite at a time. I don't know. You ever have a client this smart? No. Nor this naive. Exactly. I suppose Bill does okay. And he could testify in front of a jury. And he'd look awfully good. I've seen worse. Hell, you've argued worse. In one. <laughs> So, Mr. Lloyd says you're going to take the stand tomorrow and yes. the trial thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's strange, but I'm, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Well, we'll be there. Um, um, I, uh, I don't know how to say this to you, but, um, I don't want you to come. You know, and, and, uh, and please, you know, don't be hurt, but I don't want you to come to, uh, to the trial either, okay? You want to go through that alone? I am alone. <sighs> Billy. Billy, it'll look like we're not supporting you. Okay, you want to shut us out of this too, huh? Well, it's tough enough already, you know. Your being there would only make it tougher, right? Huh? You know what I mean? Sure. Feel okay? Fine. Sleep good? I normally sleep very low. Well, just relax. Try not to be nervous. I'm not nervous. Have you uh, met with Lisa? No. Uh, Bill? When we go to trial, Lisa will be prosecution witness. Oh? Well, don't worry. She, she'd never say anything to hurt me. Now, you have said that you were confused by three things during your interrogation. Yes. That they were lying to you, they were contradicting themselves, and uh, not finding you a lawyer. That would be a fair statement. Then you did not understand the situation you found yourself in? Yes. You knew you were under arrest. You knew they were police officers. And you had been arrested for burglary. So what was the confusion? Well, that, uh, that I was arrested for burglary and, and, and being questioned uh, for murder. And then Sergeant Trujillo began to talk about the L.A. case. And he said, in substance, that if I cooperated, I would get six to seven years and, uh, and if not, they had so much on me that I'd be facing the death penalty. Uh, when did he say this? Oh, before he began questioning me about the burglary. Well, then why didn't you say, Sergeant Trio? If you're going to talk to me about the L.A. case, I've already asked for a lawyer and I want one. Well, I was very confused. I had no, uh, no reason to believe that such a thing was uh, possible. Then what happened? I, uh, I believe at that point I asked to speak to uh, Lisa Darby. Seemed only natural to want to talk to one's fiance. So after you had been so intimidated by Sergeant Trujillo, when you were being questioned by uh, Detectives Gleason and Set, did you tell the truth? No. No. No, not the uh, not the entirety of the uh, of the narrative of both robberies. Uh, nor the murder. All lies. Yes. And the gun being distributed piece by piece on the way to Salt Lake City? Also a lie. Oh, uh, what, what did happen to the gun? Uh, I sold it uh, approximately a week before Christmas. It was later returned to me. How did this happen? I met a man outside a convenience store uh, near my home. Uh, it was late at night, and uh, I was just returning from my friend uh, Todd's house. We just played bridge. And uh, this gentleman and I were walking in the same direction. Um, he asked me for a cigarette, and, and we got to talking. Um, he told me that he liked to walk a lot at night, like I do, and that he used to carry a gun uh, because he was afraid of being mugged. Let me, in the interest of time, guess what happened next. You told him that you had a gun. And he expressed an interest in purchasing it. And in fact, a sale was consummated. That's excellent, yes. Then 
How'd you get the gun back? It, uh, it was sitting on my parents' uh, front doorstep. Really? When? Oh, Christmas Eve evening. It just, just showed up, just like that. And of course, you don't know where this other person is. Oh, well, I have no idea. And your knowledge about the crime? Television news, and, uh, and I was familiar with the area because I, I lived nearby. And what steps did you take to tell anyone that you had not committed this crime, that you were, that you were forced or tricked into confessing to it? None. None. Not, not until I, uh, I told my lawyers the truth. Well, what's the score? 500 to 1. You got one point. You got your name right. Let's go. Games theory. So much for appearing before a jury. Now what? My friend, it all hinges on two things. Love and fantasy. Bill is out of his mind for Lisa. Anything to make himself look more important in her eyes seems reasonable to him. Fantasy becomes real. But that's Burnt's thing. Well, mother said is the other side of Burnt's bent coin. Let's think like Bill for a minute. The name of my game, Impress Lisa. So I tell everybody bragging macho stories like robbing the photo store. I tell them I'm going to become a master criminal. Then there's a convenient cop killing in my neighborhood. Nobody's nailed, so I claim it to my friends, but somebody tells the cops. Now do I say, hey, I was only kidding, and look like a fool to Lisa? Not me. No, I move to phase two. I go to trial, and I'm cool because I know I didn't do it. I beat the cop killing rap, and what does that do to my master criminal image to sweet Lisa? That, um, I win the game. All the prosecution's got Six shell casings, no gun. Two witnesses that point to mother shed and say, this is not the man who robbed me. We've got Burnt, who has confessed to the killing. He's sitting there dripping with blood, convicted as accessory to double murder. You really think a jury's gonna buy that? I don't need a jury to buy it. I need one juror with reasonable doubt. No, no, no. Bill's confessions are too damaging. He's crying. He's scared. He's sorry. I think we should admit the shooting in a moment of panic. Stupid 18-year-old panic. Admit the crime. It's not premeditated. Plead guilty within those circumstances. His age, his lack of criminal record, he could get second degree. That's 20 years. He's out in 8 to 10. It's not our choice, is it? The man who faces the time makes the decision. He's a kid. Not anymore. We've got to make that clear to him. He's an adult facing, what do you call it? LWAP. LWAP. Life without possibility of parole. So, if we get one juror to buy reasonable doubt because of Burnt, you're off. But that's a big risk. If you admit the crime, that you did it in panic and not premeditation, then you're out in eight to ten years. No, no, I can't. I will not accept the blame for killing Officer Webb. Son, are you sure? It's all or nothing. Charlie's not here? Uh, he had to see a judge. He'll be here in a minute. We're ready. OK. How you feel? Good. They got a lot of witnesses lined up this morning, so uh, it's... You know th that I did it.
just told me that he did it. He's lying again. Why would he? Games? Or he may not know he's lying. Anyway, the man needs a lawyer. And the fact that the shell casings lay in the sand for months would not alter your opinion that they match the six shell casings found at the Webb murder scene. Not at all. These shells were reloads. That means new primers were put in. When the gun is fired, the primer is marked like a fingerprint. The breech markings make it positive that they were fired from the same gun. Bill Mothershed bought that gun, and he becomes the bridge between the casings found in Socorro and those found at the murder scene. And when you were asked to identify the man who robbed you, did you? No, he was not in the lineup. Do you see him in the courtroom? No, he's not here. And is the man who robbed you here today? I do not see him. When he was first arrested, we know Bill Mothershed discussed your claiming the reward for the Officer Webb killing. And now, you've testified that in Chicago, he also admitted to killing a police officer in what he called the photo store robbery. Yeah. And what did you say to that? I asked him why he left the money on the counter. And he said that after he shot the cop, he had to get out of there, so he took the police car. And did Mr. Mothershed wear this blue denim jacket a lot? <sighs> yes. If he wore a jacket, it was always this one, right? It was the only coat he owned. Now, you indicated on direct examination that you and Bill were pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. Would it be accurate to say that Bill was more serious about you than you were about him? Yeah. Lisa, do you remember when you were in Chicago, Bill told you about a dream he had? Yeah. Will you please recount for us the conversation you had with Mr. Mothershed about his dream? It was when he came to visit me over Christmas. Uh, he had said that he was going to bring a car and we'd drive back to school together, but he didn't. Um, so I borrowed my dad's car. <sighs> I wish I had had uh, money for a motel. Never been with a girl in a motel. <laughs> I know. Lisa, I, um... I had a dream the other night. It was actually, it was more of a nightmare. Um, and uh, I was, I was dreaming that I was sleeping. And I was in my bedroom. And um, outside the window was Officer Webb. Um, and he was with his wife. And I stood up. And, and he shot me with his gun. Same amount of times I shot him. He said when the officer shot him, it formed the letter U. You've testified that you lied about killing Officer Webb so that you might serve time in California instead of Texas. That's right. Now, you've told the court that you preferred going to prison in California instead of Texas. But wouldn't you, in fact, have faced a possible death penalty in California for murdering a policeman? 
even with the death penalty, there's an automatic appeal. That would have delayed my time going to Arizona or Texas. How'd you know about the abandoned cruiser? Well, that, uh, that was on the TV news. Coming to you live from the Sepulveda. Again, I knew the area because of making Father Dominic's deliveries. You can see everything about the car on TV. How did you know the sequence of events surrounding Webb's killing? Police radio. I got a police scanner. I listen to it all the time. On Christmas Eve, I didn't have anything better to do. This is unit 21. I am at Workman and Woodruff. I'm going to go code 6 to question 211 suspect. You said you fooled the detectives? Tell the court, how did you know the homicide area? I didn't. I told them I was too messed up on drugs to remember. So they drove me to the area. It turns out it was the same neighborhood that I made mission deliveries for Father Dominic. Looks familiar yet? Yeah. Yeah, around the corner's the garage, right? Now, you had never seen the crime scene. How could you possibly know where Officer Webb had fallen? Well, you see, the police took me there. And they kind of let me wander around. And I was getting kind of emotional. And then I spotted it. Yeah. Yeah, I was certain. Yeah, this is where it happened. He fell there and, uh, that bullet holes my last three shots. And it's your position that you confessed in order to keep from going to Texas. And you wanted to show up the police. I made fools of them. They bought it. Dieted me, locked me up for two months. Why would you want to confess to killing a policeman? Look, I just wanted a name feel proud, be somebody for once. When I confessed, it made all the papers and the TV news. All my life, I'm a nobody, a nothing. My closing will be brief. I've never in my life had a case, heard of a case, but two people confessed the same crime, never like this. Now, who's fantasizing? Mothershed or Bennett? They both are. The prosecution would have you believe that Bernard, in his confession, was lying. But they believed him. They locked him up for two months. They indicted him. He confessed. And then he retracted his confession. And of course, Bernd is a liar. We know that he lies. He testified under oath that he lies. The prosecution's two witnesses, they pointed to Mr. Mothershed and said, this is not the man. This is not the man. Those six shell casings dug out of the sand, even they're not certain, because there's no gun. So, what do we have here? We have two confessions. We have two confessions and no witnesses. What do you, the jury, have? Bill, would you stand, please? Judge, with your permission. You have this little freshman who's never done anything in his life, who brags in order to be somebody, and you have a veteran of the system just convicted as accessory to double murder. Thank you, Bill. That's the evidence. There's one thing for certain. Nobody knows. Who killed Officer Webb? I don't know. Mr. Watson doesn't know. Heck, he's just charged two people with the same crime. But you must know beyond a reasonable doubt. In the longest day you live, you will never forgive yourself if you find him guilty when it's not proven. But facts 
try for not guilty in this case. Now, you've heard both confessions from both men, and as you've seen, this is a kind of report card listing the specifics of both robberies and uh, the web killing. For example, took bills only, uh, no bag, correct clothing, number of shots, reload bullets, Webb's gun not drawn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. On the left, what mother shed knew, and on the right, what burnt knew. Now, you've heard where Burns got his information. But Bill Mothershed said he got his from the television. Question is, when? He left Los Angeles Christmas Day, the day after the murder. The final score, Bill Mothershed, 92% burnt, 40%. So, on Christmas Eve, at approximately 3.51 a.m. Officer Jeremy Webb saw a suspect answering the description of the convenience store robbery. He radioed that he was going to question the suspect. He passed the suspect, made a U-turn, and pulled over. The defendant then gets into the car and drives. Mothershed then disposed of the gun by hiding it in his backpack and dropping pieces along the route to Salt Lake City. I don't want you to see Mr. Mothershed as they present him, an innocent young freshman in a brand new suit. I want you to see the Bill Mothershed who bought that 9mm gun in Socorro from Wayne Farrell with reload ammunition and who fired that gun in Socorro. And I want you to see him the next time he fired that gun on Christmas Eve when he stood over Officer Webb and continued to shoot him. I ask for a fair and just verdict of first-degree murder. A just verdict is a conviction, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Foreman, please give your verdict to the clerk. Please read the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, William Mothershed, guilty of murder in the first degree. John. Thank you, Charles. John, you killed us with that report card. <laughs> you buy your drink? Yeah, so long as it's not a victory drink. No. No victory here. Interlocking tragedies. Policemen killed, two families destroyed. A highly intelligent young man, full of promise, goes to prison. Can you imagine what it must be like to be 18 and face life without possibility of parole? One thing we can celebrate, the system works. Burnt, who was a perfect candidate for the crime, didn't take the fall. Mothershed did. <laughs> 